A Life of War, introducing Matthias Klein Heisterkamp. Matthias Klein Heisterkamp, a name etched in the annals of history, not as a hero, but as a soldier deeply entwined with one of humanity's darkest chapters, the rise and fall of Nazi Germany. He rose to become an SS commander, leading men on the battlefields of a devastating war. His story is a journey through conflict, ambition, and ultimately, tragedy. It is a reminder of the complexities of war and the individuals caught within its unforgiving grasp. Klein Heisterkamp's life was dominated by military service. From the trenches of World War I to the vast plains of the Eastern Front in World War II, he witnessed the horrors of combat firsthand. He embraced the ideology of the Nazi regime rising through the ranks of the SS, Hitler's elite force. His story is not one of black and white, but rather shades of grey, forcing us to confront the uncomfortable realities of a turbulent period in human history. Born in 1893, Matthias Klein Heisterkamp's early years were shaped by the tumultuous environment of pre-World War I Germany. As a young man, he was thrust into the chaos of World War I, where he served with distinction, earning several commendations for his bravery. The aftermath of the war left Germany in economic ruin, and like many of his generation, Klein Heisterkamp found himself searching for purpose in a fractured nation. The rise of the Nazi party offered him a new path. Drawn to their promises of national rejuvenation, he joined the ranks of the SS, where he quickly ascended due to his military prowess and unwavering loyalty. His training and leadership skills were honed in the SS training camps, where he became known for his strict discipline and tactical acumen. During World War II, Klein Heisterkamp was deployed to the Eastern Front, one of the most brutal theatres of the war. There he faced not only the relentless Soviet forces, but also the harsh winter conditions that claimed the lives of many soldiers. The Eastern Front was also a site of numerous war atrocities and Klein Heisterkamp's involvement in these actions remains a dark and controversial aspect of his legacy. As the war turned against Germany, Klein Heisterkamp's fortunes waned. The once mighty SS commander found himself retreating in the face of the advancing Allied forces. After the war, he was captured and faced the consequences of his actions during the Nuremberg trials, where many of his comrades were held accountable for their roles in the Nazi regime. Matthias Klein Heisterkamp's life serves as a stark reminder of the perils of blind allegiance and the moral complexities that arise in times of war. His story is a testament to the human capacity for both ambition and destruction, and it challenges us to reflect on the choices we make in the face of conflict. In examining his life, we are compelled to confront the broader lessons of history, understanding that the past is not just a series of events, but a tapestry of human experiences that continue to shape our world today. Born in 1893, Matthias Klein Heisterkamp entered a world on the brink of change. Germany, under Kaiser Wilhelm II, was experiencing rapid industrialization and growing military might. This atmosphere undoubtedly influenced young Klein Heisterkamp, who, like many of his generation, would soon face the horrors of war. He joined the German army in 1914, caught in the maelstrom of World War I. The Great War, as it was known, was a conflict of unprecedented brutality. Millions perished in its trenches, victims of machine guns, artillery and poison gas. Klein Heisterkamp experienced this firsthand, serving with distinction and rising to the rank of lieutenant. The war left an indelible mark on him, shaping his worldview and setting the stage for his later involvement in the even greater conflict to come. The defeat of Germany in 1918 brought turmoil and humiliation. The once proud nation was burdened with reparations and forced to accept responsibility for the war. This fertile ground for resentment and extremism saw the rise of paramilitary groups like the Freikorps. These Freikorps units, composed of disillusioned veterans, sought to restore Germany's lost glory. They engaged in street battles against communists and other perceived enemies of the state. Klein Heisterkamp, drawn to their nationalist ideology and yearning for stability, joined their ranks. Within the Freikorps, he found camaraderie and a renewed sense of purpose. However, his involvement also exposed him to the darker side of German nationalism, 
where violence and intolerance were often celebrated. Section 4, entering the SS, a steady climb through the ranks. This chapter delves into the journey of one man, Klein Heisterkamp, as he navigated the treacherous waters of Nazi Germany's military and political landscape. As Germany struggled to rebuild after the devastation of World War I, a new force emerged from the shadows, the Nazi Party. The country was in turmoil, grappling with economic hardship, political instability, and a sense of national humiliation. Led by the charismatic but deeply disturbed Adolf Hitler, the Nazi party promised to restore German pride and power. Hitler's speeches resonated with many Germans who felt betrayed by the Treaty of Versailles and the Weimar Republic's perceived failures. The Nazis appealed to the same sense of nationalism and resentment that had drawn Klein Heisterkamp to the Freikorps, a paramilitary group formed in the wake of Germany's defeat in World War I. The Freikorps had been a haven for disillusioned soldiers seeking purpose and revenge. In 1932, Klein Heisterkamp joined the Nazi party and its paramilitary wing, the Schutzstaffel, or SS. This decision marked the beginning of his steady climb through the ranks of one of the most feared organizations in history. The SS, initially formed as Hitler's personal bodyguard, was rapidly transforming into a powerful and ruthless organization. Under the leadership of Heinrich Himmler, the SS expanded its role, becoming instrumental in enforcing Nazi policies and ideology. It attracted individuals like Klein Heisterkamp, men who craved order, discipline, and were seduced by the Nazi ideology. The SS offered a sense of belonging and purpose, drawing in those who were willing to commit themselves fully to the cause. Klein Heisterkamp's military experience and unwavering loyalty made him an asset to the SS. His background in the Freikorps had already proven his dedication and capability as a soldier. He rose quickly through the ranks, proving himself a capable officer. His strategic acumen and leadership skills did not go unnoticed, earning him promotions and greater responsibilities within the SS. His ascent through the SS hierarchy demonstrated his ambition and ruthlessness, qualities that would both serve and haunt him in the years to come. As he climbed higher, the stakes grew ever more perilous, and the line between duty and moral compromise became increasingly blurred. Klein Heisterkamp's journey through the SS was marked by a series of pivotal moments and decisions that would shape his legacy. Each step up the ladder brought new challenges and opportunities, testing his resolve and commitment to the Nazi cause. Historical records and documents from the era reveal the extent of his involvement in various Nazi operations and the impact of his actions on both his peers and the broader war effort. His story is a testament to the complex and often dark nature of ambition within the Nazi regime. Reflecting on Klein Heisterkamp's rise through the SS offers a sobering look at how individuals can be drawn into and rise within such a destructive system. It serves as a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the moral compromises that can accompany the pursuit of power. Today, as we look back on this dark chapter in history, it is crucial to remember the lessons learned and to ensure that such a path is never taken again. The story of Klein Heisterkamp and his steady climb through the ranks of the SS is a powerful reminder of the importance of vigilance and the need to uphold ethical standards in all aspects of life. Section 5, a stain on the uniform, Klein Heisterkamp's legal troubles. Despite his rise within the SS, Klein Heisterkamp's career was not without its shadows. In 1938, he faced legal troubles that threatened to derail his ambitions. He was accused of embezzlement and abuse of power, charges that revealed a darker side to his character. The details of the case remain murky, shrouded in the secrecy that often surrounded the SS. What is known is that Klein Heisterkamp was found guilty and sentenced to prison. However, his sentence was commuted and he was reinstated into the SS. This incident, while swept under the rug, serves as a stark reminder of the corruption and lack of accountability that plagued the Nazi regime. It also highlights the complexities of judging individuals within a system as morally bankrupt as Nazi Germany. Section 6. The Eastern Front, leading the 8th SS Cavalry Division. 
When Germany unleashed its war machine upon Europe in 1939, Kleinheister Camp was ready. He was a seasoned officer having already served in World War I and his experience made him a valuable asset to the Nazi military hierarchy. He served with distinction in the Polish campaign, demonstrating his tactical acumen and ruthlessness. His ability to lead men into battle and achieve objectives quickly earned him recognition and promotions within the ranks. However, it was on the Eastern Front in the brutal war against the Soviet Union that he would make his most significant mark. The Eastern Front was a theatre of war unlike any other, characterised by its vast distances, harsh weather and the sheer scale of the conflict. In 1942, he was given command of the 8th SS Cavalry Division Florian Geyer. This division was named after a 16th century German knight and was part of the Waffen SS, the armed wing of the Nazi Party's SS organization. This unit, composed primarily of ethnic Germans from Romania, was tasked with combating Soviet partisans and securing rear areas behind the front lines. These partisans were local resistance fighters who used guerrilla tactics to disrupt German supply lines and communication. The fighting in the East was characterized by its brutality. The vast open landscapes of the Soviet Union provided little cover, and the harsh winters added another layer of suffering for the soldiers. Both sides committed atrocities, and civilians were often caught in the crossfire. Villages were burned, and entire communities were displaced as the front lines shifted back and forth. Klein Heisterkamp led his division with an iron fist, earning a reputation for both his effectiveness and his ruthlessness. His leadership style was uncompromising and he demanded absolute obedience from his men. He became a symbol of the brutal war on the Eastern Front, where the lines between soldier and executioner often blurred. The 8th SS Cavalry Division was involved in numerous anti-partisan operations, which often resulted in severe reprisals against local populations. Orders from higher command frequently called for harsh measures to be taken against suspected partisans and their supporters. These orders were carried out with ruthless efficiency by Kleinheisterkamp and his men. The interactions between the soldiers and the local populations were fraught with tension and suspicion. Trust was a rare commodity and fear was ever present. The legacy of Kleinheisterkamp and the 8th SS Cavalry Division is one of destruction and suffering. The scars left by their actions are still felt in the regions they once occupied. Today, memorials and historical sites stand as reminders of the brutal conflict and the lives that were forever changed by the war. The story of the 8th SS Cavalry Division is a stark reminder of the horrors of war and the depths of human cruelty.